Congress is throwing reluctant support behind President Obama's plan to combat the threat from Sunni militants seizing land in Iraq and Syria. The House of Representatives today voted to support a strategy to arm and train moderate Syrian rebels to fight ISIS terrorists on the ground. KKL9 political reporter Dave Bryan joins us now with more on the tense day on the Hill during the ISIS debate. Dave. So the vote is over now in the House, but it looks like the controversy may be just beginning. In the end, it wasn't especially close, but more than 150 liberal Democrats and conservatives Conservative Republicans voted no for a variety of reasons, either fearing that the mission could lead to another endless war or that the Obama administration plan to deal with ISIS is too weak to work. This vote, the yeas are 273, the nays are 156. The amendment is adopted. The vote to authorize the arming and training of moderate Syrian rebels to fight against ISIS, the militant Islamic State, capped off a day of dramatic debate and deep divisions in the House of Representatives. Divisions that were played out on the floor of the House, where California Congress members played a prominent role. Voting against this request would send a terrible message that America is unwilling to stand with those who are already fighting a common enemy and confirm the views of many in the region that America is but a paper tiger. Madam Speaker, our consistent experience in this region should be screaming this warning at us. We're making a big mistake. In an uncontrolled, war-torn, destabilized country, who do we trust? We don't know if somewhere down the line they will turn our guns right back on us. That question, can those believed to be fighting against ISIS be trusted with weapons provided by the U.S., pervaded much of the debate, even from a California Republican who fought with the Marines in Iraq and Afghanistan. The last thing that we should do is arm Islamic rebels to further Islamic rebels. But after intense lobbying from the White House, reportedly including telephone calls from the president to the leadership of both parties, the administration got the support it was looking for. It is a message to our allies and regional partners that our nation is prepared to train and equip those who are working to stop ISIL's advance. Nonetheless, the issue has set Republican against Republican and Democrat against Democrat, like two Southern California Democrats who talked to me about their votes on the Syria Amendment. Uh, it was something I voted for. The threat from ISIL is very real. Uh, and if we're not prepared to put ground forces of our own there to fight ISIL, and I certainly don't think that's either desirable or productive, uh, then we have to find those we can work with, and that includes the Syrian rebels. But I voted no today. I completely believe that we need to confront ISIS, but we cannot do it in an impulsive manner with an incomplete strategy uh, and without the full-on participation of a Congress that debates um, and passes a, an authorization for the use of force. Well, the amendment was attached to a budget continuation bill to keep the government running, and some opponents complained that put them in the position of either voting to shut down the government in effect in an election year or approving the training and support of Syrian rebels. The Senate is expected to vote as early as tomorrow on that budget bill. Lena? All right, Dave, thank you.